Hey, how are we Rev Youth? As you can see, the mustache won. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the mustache. My face feels naked, but I have to say, after looking in the mirror a few times this morning, I probably have one of the top five lip sweaters in the office. Definitely uh, within the church, I would argue. Not a big deal. Um, so. We're coming back with week two of taking notes. We're gonna keep kind of going after it the way that we started last week because we got some great feedback on kind of just sitting down at the desk, um, opening up the Bible together, but also writing and taking notes. So last week we talked about Acts chapter two, verse 42, and there was four things that we kind of discussed that we were going to focus on. So the first one we talked about was teaching. So teaching, we're checking that one off. Teaching has been talked about. Today, as we read Acts chapter 2, verse 42, we're going to be talking about fellowship. So go ahead, write that down. Circle it, box it, star it, whatever you got to do. Maybe even have some highlighters, color code it, right? Um, but Acts chapter 2, verse 42 says this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. The reason why I feel like we really need to focus on fellowship is because within the church kind of culture, I feel like a lot of people have heard the word fellowship, but it's not a word that we use outside of church too often. It's really not. Like I would never say to my friends like, hey, let's go fellowship on Friday night. I just wouldn't do it, right? It sounds a little weird saying it out loud. But I would say, hey, let's go hang out Friday night. Let's go catch a movie. Let's have dinner. You guys come over. Let's play some Xbox. Like, let's hop, like, let's hop on Zoom or FaceTime and hang out because we're not able to hang out in person. But I wouldn't really say like, hey, let's go fellowship later. When a lot of people think of fellowship within church, they think of things like potlucks where everybody gets together. It's like-minded people coming together, eating food, and like, that's great. I've been to potlucks and they're delicious. Uh, I remember growing up in the, the Baptist church that I went to in middle school and high school. Every Friday night, we would have like fellowship Fridays. So we would go to the pastor's house. There would be a grill. We'd be grilling burgers, kielbasa, hot dogs. There would be all the sides you could think of. They had a, a huge trampoline, so like we were always playing knockout on that. And then there was this huge volleyball court uh, built into their yard, and we would just have epic games. But that would be like how I would think of fellowship within church. But the reality of what fellowship really means in this verse is the Greek word koinoia, and. The way I want you to remember this is koinoia is to fellowship what ohana is to family. Ohana means family. Koinoia means fellowship. Koinoia, what it really means is sharing together. It means participating together. So it's taking this time of being together and bringing Jesus into it. Because everything is better when you bring Jesus into it. And so hanging out with friends becomes even better and more powerful and God's able to use that time when you bring Jesus into it and that's what fellowship is supposed to be. So there's really two things I want you to focus on today. I want you to focus on who is in your circle. Who are you spending time with? Who are you fellowship with, fellowshipping with? Who are you investing time in and who's investing time in you? Is it people who are going to sharpen you to be the, the godly man or the godly woman that God created you to be? In Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, it says, iron sharpens iron. And in the New Living Translation, which I love, it says, like a friend sharpens a friend. Your friends sharpen you. Your friends uh, refine the way that you think. You, you become more and more who your friends are. And so are your friends sharpening you to be a better follower of Jesus? I wanna challenge you if they're not, get some people around you who are gonna push you in the right direction. And when you spend time with like-minded people and you open up your Bible and you start reading it and you start studying it and, and the teaching becomes alive to you and you're doing it in this fellowship, that you're doing it in this gathering, the next step in it is that fellowship isn't just meant to be something that happens, it's something that you do. So you are together and then you go and do together. You go and you share your faith 
with other people. You encourage each other to step out in boldness. And so I want to be the kind of youth ministry where, yeah, we gather together and we have fun and we hang out and we play games and we do all that awesome stuff. But we come together, we bring Jesus into it, and then we bring Jesus to the world that needs it. And I think right now, this kind of fellowship is needed more than ever. And so we want to continue to gather together. We're going to connect through Instagram, through Facebook, through YouTube, through all the different things that we have. The leaders are going to continue to reaching out to you. We're, we're potentially even going to start doing like a Zoom call with all the youth students who want to come in and we're going to spend time together. We're going to bring Jesus into it and then we're going to bring Jesus to the world because the world needs Jesus. It's dark right now. People are hopeless. People are searching for answers and we know the answer. The answer is Jesus. And so Rev Youth, we're going to pray into this. We're going to pray into this idea of coming together, being surrounded by people who are loving each other, building each other up, sharpening each other. But then you know what? We're going to go out into the world and we're gonna preach Jesus to people who need to hear about it. So let's pray. Father God, I just thank you so much for the students of Rev Youth. God, I thank you that we're able to spend even just a couple of minutes together just talking about the Bible, talking about who you want us to be, the lives you created us for, the mission that you put on our hearts to reach people who are lost and hurting. And so God, I pray for each and every student that you would speak to them directly where they're at right now. You know their particular circumstances, God, and we just pray that you would give them peace, confidence, and just a better understanding of who you are and the plan you have for their lives. God, we want to be a, a youth ministry that spends time, spends time together, but also goes out into the world and shares Jesus. God, we just thank you. We love you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Rev Youth, we love you guys. Again, I want to encourage you to share this video, maybe with some friends, put it on your story, comment on this video, some takeaways you have. If you have prayer requests, please, please, please DM us. We're on Facebook, but that's probably where your parents are at. We know you're on Instagram. We have a YouTube page now, so go ahead, like it, subscribe to it, share this video with someone. We want to continue to come together, but we want to take what we're doing here and share it to the world. We love you guys, and we'll see you next week. All right, we need a thumbnail. So, can you...